What's up guys, Nexi here, back with another video and today we're gonna review the new Xiaomi M365 Pro electric scooter and we're gonna compare it with the standard model. Stay tuned. More than 15 months ago, I reviewed the first generation of M365 electric scooter from Xiaomi. Since then, I drove this scooter for 550 km in all weather conditions, summer and winter, and I had only two minor issues to report in all of this time. First one, I had a flat back tire twice, and a couple of times I needed to adjust the latch mechanism. And that's it. Nothing breaks, nothing failed, and in fact this scooter is still my number one transportation vehicle for town, and my main home supplier for groceries. In fact, I was so impressed with the scooter that I brought one more for my wife as well. And on her scooter, odometer shows 370 km and she got no issues with it. Not even a flat tire. Now this year, Xiaomi released the new upgraded pro version of this scooter and I decided to order one from Banggood. Three weeks later after my pre-order, I received my package and the new pro version was finally here. Nice. And now let's unbox it and see what is changed compared to the standard version? Alright, here's what you're gonna find inside the box. You will get scooter, power adapter, T-shaped wrench, screws, extending nozzle and manual. Just like the standard version, you have to install the handlebar in a place and screw down 4 screws, 2 on each side of the bar, which takes a few minutes. After that I take off this plastic protective foil from the handlebar and from LCD screen as well. And that's it. The scooter is ready for ride, but first let's see what's changed. After spending some time looking this pro version in a close detail on every side, I realize again how nice looking this scooter actually is. And also, I start to notice a lot of changes that Xiaomi has made on this pro version. The first difference that I noticed was the frame size. The pro version has more bigger frame and it's a bit more heavier. For example, the space for feet support on the standard version from this weld to the back fender it's 40 cm and on the Pro it's 45 so you have a 5 cm more space for feet and it's also a bit wider as well 7 mm but still color of this rubber pad is also changed now it's soft black instead of grey the height of the handlebar is now increased by 4 cm on the standard version length of this bar is 65 and on the Pro is 69 cm which means that taller drivers will have more comfort and more space for feet if they choose Pro model. And also the color of this handlebar is now soft black instead of grey. With a bigger frame also comes the bigger battery and the longer range. The new Pro version has the same 10S 36V lithium ion battery pack, but instead of the standard 7800 mAh, now it comes with a much larger capacity of 12800 mAh which is 65% more battery capacity on the Pro version and the range is now extend from 30 to 45 km. If I remove this battery cover, we can see that on the Pro version the battery is much larger and more secure, as the whole battery pack is now sealed inside of this aluminum box, which protects the battery against damage, physical impact, water and moisture. On the regular version, battery pack is in this plastic holder and it's a wrap in a plastic foil. Motor controller, wire thickness and other electronic components looks pretty much identical to the standard version, at least visually. I will not disassemble motor controller and inspect the MOSFETs as that will void warranty, but if I found more info about electronic differences, I will leave it in a comment section. In terms of wheels and tire size, they look exactly the same on both models. Hub motor also look exactly the same from outside, except for the label specs which on the Pro now says 300W and the rim is now a dark red color, as well the cables and frame caps. On the standard version, label says 250W and the cable and frame caps are in a red color. I'm not sure is the hub model actually upgraded under the hood physically, but the Pro model has a slightly different sound on free spin, like the phases on the model are not the same anymore, so it might be the case that Xiaomi has upgraded the model as well. Also the spec label on the frame also shows 300 watt. Next difference is the new charging port cap. The new Pro version now comes with magnetic cap, which is very nice. 
as on the standard version sometimes it can be a bit tricky to push this cap back in a place as it has this extended rubber in the middle that goes inside of the charging port which protect it from the water and moisture. This new magnetic cap on a pro version basically just pops back in a place instantly as soon as you let it go which is much better solution. The only thing that worries me though is Will this new magnetic cover be able to hold the water away from the charging port as good as the old one? Let's do a quick test. Well, it seems it worked nice. Charging port looks dry and no water has leaked inside. Only one thing, you might want to slide this cover up like this when you close it, just to be more safe. Now speaking of charging port, both standard and pro version comes with the same charging ports and the same 42V 2A power adapter, which is a bit shame as with a bigger battery on the pro version, charging time will be longer and now instead of 5 hours, the new pro version takes 8 hours to fully charge from 0 to 100%. Obviously you will not charge the battery all the time from 0 to 100% every day, but still I wish that the Xiaomi has upgraded this charger to at least 4 amp, which will double the charging speed. The next change on the Pro version is the new LCD screen, which is bright, sharp and very useful. It shows the speed and some more info. Double click on the bottom will switch between three different driving modes. From Eco to Sport. It also shows Bluetooth status, headlight indication, battery level and error codes, which is very useful. On the standard version, you only have this four light bar, which shows battery level. For more info, on the standard version, you have to connect the scooter on the smartphone and use the app to show you the speed and etc, which is not that convenient. Next difference are the brakes. The new Pro version now comes with a wider, 120mm disc brake, so it should have a more stronger brakes compared to the standard version. I have also noticed some changes on the latching mechanism. The Pro version now have a slightly redesigned latching mechanism, with longer and more curved lever with a limit pins. This new lever has also more free movement, which is much better solution. And folding and unfolding the scooter is much easier now compared to the standard version. I have also noticed that the ring bell is now black instead of silver, and it's a slightly different design. On the standard model, there is this short plastic piece, which slams on a bell, which is not really precise, and it can make a ringing noise sometimes when you drive on a rough road. On a pro version, now there is this metal spring on a ring bell, which is much more precise, louder and better design overall. Everything else is the same as on the standard model, including the headlights brightness as well. In terms of software interface, information and features over the app, they are exactly the same like on the standard version. You can use MIUI Home app to connect with a scooter, and lock and unlock the scooter, upgrade the firmware and see all kinds of useful info like travel speed, battery level, range, battery capacity, status, charging time and etc. I will not go in so much detail here as I already reviewed this app in my M365 review video from last year. With my scooter I like to use this M365 tools app which shows much more useful info on the first screen and it can show all kinds of information including every cell group voltage which is great. You also don't need to have any MIUI account to use this app. You can just install it and use it right away with your standard scooter or the pro version. And now you can see how these two scooters look next to each other. Like I said the pro version are taller and much better choice for taller drivers as the handlebars are in a higher position and you have a more space for feet. In terms of driving experience, the Pro version feels much more responsive and more pleasant to drive. Having the more space for feet and better driving position is definitely a plus for a Pro model. Not only that is now even more enjoyable to ride, but it feels even more stable on the road when making turns. In terms of acceleration and power, the Pro model feels much more powerful and more torquier compared to the standard version. When I connect it to the app and test it on a S-Drive mode, this scooter hit 1000 watt peak power, which is great for riding up hills and for a quick start. Having the bigger battery also means that you can maintain higher speed when drive uphill, as the bigger battery can maintain high voltage and push more amps for longer periods of time, with a less stress or heat. 
In terms of speed on a flat road, on eco mode it's 15, on dry mode it's 20, and on the sport mode is limited to 25 km an hour, which for me is totally fine and it's under the law for this type of vehicle. On flat and uphill you cannot drive faster than 25. Only in a high downhill you can reach maximum 32 as when you pass 25 limit the scooter software cuts off the power and you can continue a bit more on a freewheel. You can see on the app screen when the power was cut off and the wattmeter shows negative value. Only when the speed lowers back to 25 the power comes back and the scooter returns to normal state. In terms of range the spec sheet says 45 km range on some ideal conditions. So I decided to put it on the test and see how much I can get. Since I have a very nice and flat bicycle track very close to my place, around 8 km long, I decided to do a range test. I full charged the scooter over the night, I reset odometer and the next day I drove the scooter back and forward on this bicycle track until only 6% of the battery was left and I managed to get over 46 km range under a 3 hours long ride which is amazing. I basically could not even drain the battery completely and I had to stop the range test because I start to feel the pain in my lower back on that 3 hours long ride and I'm guessing that I could hit that 50 km range on a singular charge because this scooter is a very efficient. On a flat road it used less than 150 watt when cruising on 18 km an hour with my 86 kilos body weight. Of course depending of your drive style, your weight and terrain, you will get the different results. For example if you are a heavy driver and you drive the scooter at longs uphills, at full throttle, the battery will drain much faster, but if you drive it normally on a drive mode and you cruise around the city, you can expect a very long range. Alright guys, I hope that you liked this video and found it useful, I think the new pro version are really awesome and if you like to get one of these scooters, check the link in the video description. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave the comment. Thanks for watching and I see you next time. Bye bye.